Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight, where we look at what's really going on in the world of the Bricks. Now, as most of you who watch my videos are aware, the EU has attempted to unsuccessfully wean itself the import of Russian gas. Now, it's managed to however, drastically reduce the volumes of cheap Russian pipeline gas it imports. But that's had a dramatic effect on the industries of Europe, with many of them that are energy intensive either leaving Europe or shutting down altogether. Now, one industrial sector that's had to all intents and purposes closed down is the fertilizer industry, which uses natural gas as a feedstock. Without the cheap and plentiful supplies of Russian pipeline gas, their plants became uneconomic to operate, so they stopped. So despite the cooling of relations, the European Union has confirmed that we'll continue to purchase Russian fertilizers from uh, Russia and it will, they will not be subject to sanctions. Now in July, imports reached their highest level in the last 20 months. Russia is now the primary supplier but the EU market is actually not Russia's most significant export destination. But anyway, now what factors are driving Europe's reliance on Russia? Well, the European Union has increased its Russian fertilizers because its market is uh, basically dependent on Russia. It's now over 40% of Russia uh, dependent on Russian fertilizer. I mean, that's from a year ago where Russia's market share had dropped to 18.5%. It's had to import simply because the, uh, there's no alternatives to Russian supplies. The locals have, have shut down and alternative suppliers are just not available. I mean, the total value of imported fertilizers reached 650 million euros. And to say 40% of that was Russian. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund my channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, uh, to further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation, and that's done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me. And I'm thanking you all just for watching because I do appreciate all of you who make a view of my channel. Now, the main purchases of Russian fertilizers were Poland, France and Germany. Poland's purchases actually doubled, reaching 55 million euros, while France increased by fold to 31.5 million euros. Even Germany's were up by a third, 25 million euros. Ireland's was quite interesting. I mean, these went from... Uh, 18,000 times from 1,000 euros to 801.8 million euros. I mean, Romania also had an increase in fertilizers, went up to 17.3 million euros, while Bulgaria went up 25 fold to 12.9 million euros. That's all because the Germans and the French can't produce fertilizers anymore. So Russia is now the primary supplier of fertilizer to the EU, with Mo Morocco in second place and supplies tripling to almost uh, in July to 111 million euros. The top three was rounded out by Egypt, which was actually got a 1.4 times increase in exports at 85 million, with Algeria and Canada also filling up the, the top five. Now the growth in the exports of Russian fertilizers to the EU is linked to the two factors low cost and the decline in the production volumes within the Eurozone. Now, according to Vladimir Chernoff, who's an analyst at Phenom Finance Global, fertilizers is an energy intensive process. The cost price of some types of fertilizer is about 50 to 60% the cost of the energy resources, and that's the gas used in the production. In 2022, the European prices for Russian gas increased significantly to around 800 per thousand cubic meters, but did fluctuate all the way up to 3,400. Now that led to the closure of the main fertilizer production plants within the EU. And despite gas prices coming down, they're still at twice the levels they were before the pre-crisis and the uh, sanctions on Russia. And this is due to a number of countries not opting to purchase the Russian gas, either through their own accord or the destruction of the Nord Stream, and been able and unable to do so. I mean, Russian fertilizers are the most competitively priced due to Russia having much lower energy costs than involved in their production. I mean, they produced the gas and they got cheap prices. 
I mean, at the beginning of last year, Germany's largest producer, BASF, ceased production completely. And a number of ammonia plants have ceased operations on a permanent basis because of the rise in prices. I mean, by the way, for those of you in the UK, that includes Sir Wankier Starmer's fiefdom in the UK, who've not actually worked out that you can't make fertiliser from wind farms, solar panels or unicorn farts, and only natural gas works in their production. So and still, they're freezing the pensioners to death by taking away their winter fuel allowance. Now, without fertilisers for the farmers in the UK to grow their crops, their yields will be down, and so will food production, so they'll now be able to starve the pensioners to death. And if the cold doesn't kill them, the government will starve them still. So Wankier still gets his free suits and his tickets to watch Arsenal. I didn't vote for him, and nobody I know did, anyway. Enough of that. Now, prior to BSS plant closure, France and Poland bought their fertilisers, and Germany obviously bought a fair bit of it. Now, following its closure, they began to look for alternative solutions to offset the losses, and that means it's Russia. Low costs, good value. Now, in previous years, there was a 8% reduction in the production of fertilisers in the EU, and that was down to 28.2 million tonnes. Suddenly, there was a 64% decline in phosphate fertilizer production. Potash production also went down, as did mixed fertilizers, mainly because of the uh, problems with the gas. Now, according to uh, Anatoly Tekhanov, who's director of the International Agribusiness and Food Center at the Russian School of Food Science, 50% of European enterprises have now closed. And the remaining ones that are still operating are only working at 40% of their capacity. Now, the growth in Russian fertilizer exports is a result of high demand. And because of the start of the new agricultural season will take place in parts of Asia and Latin America and um, Africa. Plus, EU countries as well as China and Brazil are actively increasing their reserves because they want to buy now while the price is at a reasonable level. And that's causing a global fertilizer deficit. I mean, Russia's currently got a huge surplus of fertilizer given that export quotas have actually exceeded the domestic needs. So without negatively impacting domestic consumers, Russia has the capacity to supply at least another 300,000 tonnes of fertiliser to the global market. Now, in addition to competitive pricing and convenient logistics, Russian fertiliser is also known for their environmental friendliness as they're free from heavy metals and other things that are, uh, cause problems. Consequently, Europe's not the only region that's increasing its purchases of Russian fertilizers. I mean, China just set a new record in the first eight months of 2024, with purchases of Russian fertilizers reaching almost a billion dollars worth. Now, that's an increase of almost a third on last year. Plus, Russia's displaced Belarus, its neighbor, which used to be the market leader in the Chinese market. So what factors have contributed to that? So well, China's purchases of Russian fertilizer are, are due to their competitive prices and cost-effective logistics. Basically, I mean, Russia and China are the longest land border in the world between two countries, and it's dead easy to just to ship it across the border, either by the BAM or the Trans-Siberian. Indeed, Europe's not really a primary market for any Russian products. It's, there are more significant global agricultural centres, India, Latin America, particularly Brazil. Now, it's clear that European farmers are going to face significant challenges in the absence of Russian fertilisers. Particularly, they're going to face lower yields, and there's no real alternatives to Russian fertilisers in the market. And there's been a total um, notable increase in demands, particularly from India and China. And that's out to pacing their domestic demand production capacity. And that, as a result, is imports are being uh, regularly increased. Because currently, the majority of African countries are looking to increase their yields, and that necessitates the utilisation of more fertilisers. I mean, over the past six months, FOSS Agro has increased its shipments of fertilisers to African countries by over 70%. 
And that's according to Alexander Timothy, who's a professor at the Russian University of Economics. Right. Supplies to China is 3.5 million tonnes. India got a record volume of 5.4 million tonnes. Now, do bear in mind, Russia fertiliser products are now sold in over 100 countries around the world. And Russia now accounts for 15% of urea exports, 20% of potassium chloride. The demand for fertilisers continues to grow. Global demand is growing at a rate of 15 to 20% a year. I mean, in Russia, fertilizer production is only growing at 3 to 6% a year. And based on current projections, Russia's fertilizer production is going to reach 60 million tons by the end of the year, with 35 million tons destined for export to neighboring and distant countries. And that includes uh, countries like Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, and Azerbaijan. So Russia's fertilizer helps the world grow the food crops it needs to feed themselves and it's not just exporting oil and gas. Now thank you for watching, please like and subscribe. Also if you've enjoyed the video please uh, click on the thanks button to make a small donation. Don't forget the thanks, uh, the um, comments button, I'd love to speak to you, I'd love to communicate with you, I'd love to correspond with you. So do use the comments button and I'll see you all again soon. Thank you.